Hello, in the following video, I am going to show you how to add a custom robots.txt file to your Shopify store. Throughout this video, I am going to be using the Horizon Shopify theme, but the method we will see in this video will work with any theme. So no matter what theme you have installed, this will work as well. And as a quick recap, a robots.txt file is a plain text file on a website that provides voluntary guidelines to web crawlers on which pages or directories they are allowed or disallowed to access. Plenty of popular services like Google or ChatGPT have crawlers which they use to index information from our sites. And if for one reason or the other we want to disallow this for the whole website or for a number of pages, then crawbots.txt will be the file to modify it. And now let's understand why I say modify a robots.txt file instead of creating one. And the reason for that is because when you create your Shopify store, Shopify automatically adds a robot.txt file by default with some rules that are useful for pretty much any Shopify store. So if we preview this store and navigate to robots.txt, we see over here this command automatically generated by Shopify and then some rules over here that disallow some common paths. For example, you don't want any, any crawler crawling the admin tab or the cart page, as this is very dependent on what you do on the site. So for the robot, the cart page will always be empty. Similarly, it doesn't make sense for them to crawl the orders page, the checkout page, and so on. And for this, we will be using the robots.txt.liquid template. And as you can see here in the documentation, it renders the robots.txt file, which is hosted in the robots.txt URL. And we can see over here what this file does, which is what we already discussed in this video. And over here, we see that Shopify generates a robots.txt file by default, which works for most shops. So this template isn't included in any themes by default, meaning that we will have to manually create this template. And over here, we see the location. So we have to create this file in the templates folder. So let's do that. As this is a simple video, I am just going to do this from the browser's theme editor, but you can do this from VS Code or from whatever you are editing your theme's code. So over here, I will click on Edit Code. This will open the browser's theme editor. And once this finishes loading, over here in the Templates folder, we are going to create... Let's... What's this? Robots.txt.liquid and if I keep this like that, and then refresh this page, we are going to see that now we don't have anything here. And that is because my template is empty. So the default content that Shopify was rendering is being overridden by whatever I have here. And as I have nothing here, then nothing shows anymore in my robots.txt page. To fix that, the first step will be over here, scroll down to content and copy this. This will render the default content that is in crobots.txt when you create a Shopify store. So let's paste this over here. Let's save. And now let's refresh this page. And over here we have the initial rules. It doesn't have that comment that it previously had at the top over here, but if you wanted to recover that as well, Let's just temporarily rename this to robots2.txt and refresh this page so the default content renders again. Let's copy this comment. Let's one more time rename this to robots.txt.liquid and on the top, let's paste this comment. And after saving this, we are going to see that we are now having this comment at the top. And now let's take a look at this note over here that says that while you can replace all of the template's content with plain text rules, it is strongly recommended to use the provided liquid objects whenever possible. Default rules are updated regularly to ensure that SEO's best practices are always applied. What this means is that you can go over here to your robots.txt page and copy all of these rules in plain text, like this, and paste them over here. And that will work. See how this page doesn't change at all. 
However, the issue with this is that if Shopify tomorrow added a new page that needed to be ignored by all of these crawlers because they will not be able to access it anyways, if we use the liquid objects, Shopify will automatically update that for us. But if we have the content hard-coded, like I just did a moment ago, then that will not be the case, and we will need to manually keep adding all of these pages that Shopify adds over time. So it is a best practice to keep using these liquid objects if possible. And now, when it comes to modifying this file over here, we have this documentation page explaining us the different changes we can make to this page. We have in the requirements that we need to have this template already in the page, which we already do. And then over here, we know that robots.txt.liquid only supports the following liquid objects, which are robots, groups, cruel, user agent, sitemap, and request. We can click on any of these to see the different properties that they have available. For example, here we can see that we are getting four group in robots.default groups. And we can see here that the robots object just has a single property, default groups, which is an array of group. And if we see group, we know that it has cruel, sitemap, and user agent. And if we want to know what kind of object rule is, we click on this, and we see the directive and the value. So over here, we see that for grouping robots.default groups, we are putting here the user agent, which is, for example, this string over here, or this one over here. Basically, this is specifying the different crawlers that can come to your site. And then it is going for each rule. It is outputting the rule itself. Also, if you pay close attention to this file, you may be seeing that we are displaying the rules directly over here. So we are just rendering the rule instead of doing something like rule.value or rule.directive. The reason for that is if we go to the documentation over here, you can see that it says you can output a rule directly instead of referencing each of its properties. And to refresh, a rule is each of these lines over here that says something like disallow and a path. Now, to continue modifying our crowbots.txt file, let's see now how we can add a new rule to an existing user agent. For example, let's say that I wanted to disallow the Google Ads bot from crawling my pages directory, so anything under pages should not be crawled by this user agent. To do that, let's see over here in the documentation that what we need to do is something like this, where we check the group's user agent value, and then we add a new rule if it matches what we want. So let's go over here to the code. And right above this, let's paste this. In this case, the user agent that I want to match is not the asterisk because that will be this one. It is asbot-google. So let's paste this over here. And I want to disallow crawling pages. So let's save this. And now, once I refresh this page, you're going to see that we have a new line here, but this was only added over here. In this group, for example, we do not have this new line. And in any of the other groups, we have this new line because we are just checking for adspot dash Google. If we wanted to add it to something else, like for example, this one over here. I can copy its name and then do something again like group dot user agent value equals and this. And now once I save this, I refresh. And you can see over here. I didn't have it here. Let's see why that could be. Oh, there it is. It is above the sitemap. So there we have it. It got added to both this user agent and the adspot google user agent. But you can see that in any of the other ones, it is not added. Similarly, if we wanted to remove a rule, we will need to use a conditional like this. So for example, let's say that I want to allow my card page to be crawled. 
what I will do is over here, wrap the rendering of rule in this conditional. We can add this dash back if we want. And then we are going to look for the directive being disallow and the whole value I want to remove card. So we have to copy the value like that and paste it here, or you could just have typed it if you want. So after we save, if I refresh this page, you can see that we are no longer rendering the card rule over here. And finally, to add entirely new blocks of rules, we will do something like this. So we just copy this and paste it over here. And now we are disallowing this disco bot user agent from accessing any path in our site. So after I refresh this page over here, we can go to the bottom and we see that disco bot is disallowed. Likewise, if you wanted to explicitly allow something, you would just have to replace this disallow here with allow. Another example is that if you wanted to disallow ChatGPT from entering your site for one reason or the other, then you can copy its user agent from a page like this and paste it over here. And with that, now ChatGPT should not be able to access your site if they decide to respect the rules that are being specified over here in this robots.txt file. So after we refresh the page, we can see over here that it is added a bit. A better example could be that you want to disallow it from going to your pages content because you want it to still surface your products, but you do not want it to surface your pages content, for example, or something along those lines. That is entirely OP. And that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify-related content, and I will see you all in the next one.